De Olympische Spiele, 1936, in Berlin, discusses the 1936 Olympics held in Berlin, Germany. It showcases the preparations Germany was making prior to the Games to set up the Olympic Village. It also records the training happening for the team representing Germany and several other international teams. Not surprisingly, several international teams are undocumented or missing, such as the U.S. Olympic team. This absence can be attributed to the controversy surrounding these Olympics. At this time, Germany's culture was dominated by the Nazis led by Adolf Hitler. Taunting an anti-Semitic and anti-minority message, Hitler was known for his belief in a superior Aryan race full of blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white men and women who would regain their rightful place as the dominant race in the world. When Berlin was chosen to host the Olympics in 1936, there was plenty of tension from various countries. Several discussions on whether or not the change in location should occur. When the decision was made to keep Berlin as the host, some countries chose to bow out rather than participate in what would be dubbed the Nazi Olympics. The 1936 United States Olympic team consisted of 359 participants. The team had 313 men and 46 women that all participated, with only 18 African American athletes. For those athletes coming face to face with discrimination and messages that demonstrated their inferiority was nothing new. The 18 black athletes had to relive the same type of discriminating world they encountered back home within moments of landing in Germany. Never-ending subtle propaganda flooded the streets where the athletes rested, all purposely chosen to make a point. Examples of this propaganda can be seen in Dio Olympia Spiel 1936 in Berlin and Germansparken. The Nazi party made a clear message for the public to know everyone that wasn't in the Aryan race was considered inferior. This was a strategic tactic used to bring about the lack of focus to the games, to dismay any athlete and intimidate them. For the African Americans who were competing, it was like living in a German-speaking America. Yet, they were determined to face this segregation with determination as athletes and prove to Germany and America just what they were capable of. Within the 18 African American athletes, Jesse Owens stole the crowd away by winning the 100 meter dash. At that very moment, the world was shocked and the start of the world statement was beginning to form. Not only were the Germans surprised by an inferior crushing the competition, the news spread like wildfire throughout every corner of America. Team USA turned out to be the only competition for a very talented Team Germany. Although Germany ended up with the most medals overall, Team USA was able to come out victorious with a clear message. The Aryan race was not as superior as the Germans thought they would be. Jesse Owens' performance at the Berlin Olympics sent a shock wave of courage and enthusiasm to the African Americans across the U.S. This allowed slow reformation to begin to rise throughout the African American population. Although these changes were slow to occur and weren't very clear to distinguish just after Team USA returned, the statement allowed for a quiet, large domino effect that African Americans were ready to take center stage in the civil rights and regain their rightful status. Looking back in time, it is very clear these African American athletes set a new standard on the largest stage to never be forgotten. During the long course of the Berlin Olympics, 14 medals were won for the United States, and 8 of which were gold. Some of the athletes that made up the United States Olympic team were David Alberton, James Uval, Ralph McAuf, Fritz Puller Jr., Mac Robinson, Archie Williams, and John Woodruff. The most famous for his record-setting victories at this time was Jesse Owens. He won four medals in his time in the Olympics and also broke five world records in the 1936 Olympics. Of those four gold medals, one was achieved in the 4x100 meter race. However, even these victories were not without controversy. In order for Owens to compete, his fellow racers, Sam Stroller and Marty Gleekman, had to be pulled at the last moment. 
Many people are still skeptical today of whether or not Stroller and Gleekman pulled out because Jesse and his teammate were better runners, or the fact that they were Jewish Americans and had received pressure as such from their German competitors and hosts. Nevertheless, Jesse Owens was able to pull out a run from the race for the U.S. He set a prime example for sheer focus and determination for Team USA, regardless of what was thrown in his way. Jesse Owens defied all prejudices created by Hitler and became an African-American hero as well. The ripple effects the 1936 Olympic Games in Berlin had both within America and internationally are notable in several ways. Most immediate were the reactions these games had in Germany in subverting the messages propagated by the dominant Nazi party. However, it also created a long-term effect in America in undermining the culture of segregation and racial superiority. Finally, these Olympics changed the games themselves in both the traditions and the records set by several athletes during the competition. The propaganda perpetuated by Hitler in the 1936 games would come back around to haunt him upon the major success of the American team. The only saving grace Hitler had during these games was by pulling much of his propaganda from Berlin during the games in order to save face. He removed and banned anti-Semitic messages, chanting, newsletters, and graffiti in order to claim on an international platform that this information had merely been exaggerated. In many ways, this part was successful. However, he was not able to completely banish his message and underlying theme. He had built his German team upon the ideals of racial superiority in the Aryan race, going as far as to attempt to ban Jewish athletes from participating in all the games. Obviously, this attempt failed. The IOC refused his prohibition, however, Hitler was successful in banning anyone who was not Aryan from participating on his own team. In claiming his team was superior on a worldwide platform only to be proven wrong. Hitler undermined his party and cause when the American team, particularly those dubbed Black Auxiliaries, won medal after medal. Yet, the games that year did not have a major impact on how the Germans felt about the Third Reich. Rather, the, the Olympics gave Germans something positive to focus on among everything occurring within the regimen even if some did not find the irony of the victories within the games. The same subversion of the idea of a superior race is hauntingly similar to what the athletes encountered back home upon leaving and returning to America. Initially, Owens and many other African American athletes were backed by the NAACP in boycotting the Olympics, along with any Jewish American athletes. When Owens and other athletes chose to participate, it was an intentional understanding that they had already experienced many of these messages of a superior race while living at home under Jim Crow laws and overwhelming segregation. It was an extremely intentional decision made when Owens and other athletes chose not to boycott. They had spent many years training and knew that this was their chance to prove themselves at home and overseas. However, despite their amazing performance, when they returned home, they were snubbed. In the journal article, The Black Auxiliaries in American Memories, Sport, Race, and Politics in the Construction of Modern Legacies, there is a description of how each African-American athlete who comprised the Black Auxiliary group went home to return to their daily lives without any recognition. President Roosevelt refused to meet and never even telegraphed a congratulatory message to any member. One of these athletes, who worked as a sanitation worker, shares a story of returning home with a gold medal only to go back to the work next day sweeping trash off the streets. Owens arrived via freight to his reception after the games ended. For these athletes, there was no celebration or celebratory status like what we see now. Finally, there were several traditions that changed due to the Olympic Games of 1936 in Berlin, namely the traditional torch lighting ceremony and the salute to the host. Before these games, there was not a tradition of carrying the light that would mark the beginning of the games. After the games completed, Hitler released a propaganda documentary that showed this ceremony. However, the torch lighting at Berlin never occurred prior to the games. 
More importantly, these Olympics were the last time a country performed a traditional Roman salute to honor their host country. This salute, performed by Canada, was done facing the host with one arm raised, palm down, and fingers together. Needless to say, it was the same salute adopted first by Mussolini and then by the Nazi party. This was not handled by Canadians because it saw it as their athletes supporting the Nazi message. After the 1936 Olympics, this salute was never performed again at an Olympic event, despite it have being a large part of tradition in games prior. In looking at Dial Spiel 1936 in Berlin and Garmisch Parkinson, none of this will be presented or seen in modern magazines, news stories, or papers. In fact, despite the overwhelming success of the athletes such as Jesse Owens, there was no major nationwide or worldwide celebration nor recognition until much later in history. However, the lack of coverage does not silence the events that occurred in Berlin Olympics 1936. Neither Hitler nor America was ready to come to terms with their false racial superiority, and yet these athletes proved that they would make their mark on history, not only for the Olympic Games, but for a step towards achieving civil and human rights for all.